If I gave you 27 different ways to get construction leads, do you think you would ever run out of projects? My name is Daniel Quindamel, founder of I Am Builders, and I'm a construction consultant where I help contractors grow their construction business. And one of the challenges that almost every single contractor I work with has is they always say the same thing. I don't know how to get leads or what's the best way to get leads or I'm working with word of mouth referrals and I've been in business for 30 years. And uh, honestly, I don't know how to get construction leads. So let's solve that. I put together a super detailed guide. It's called 27 ways to get more construction leads because I think that this is the easiest, easiest way to grow your business is just fill your, just bid a lot of jobs. And the way you bid a lot of jobs is you get a lot of jobs in the door. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to kind of walk you through the strategy step-by-step step on, I'm not going to go through every single one of the 27, but I am going to show you all the 27. I'm going to quickly show it to you, but I'm also going to show you the strategy behind each one because I want to teach you how to fish. I don't want you to say like, oh, Danny says this. I want you, I want to show you exactly what you need to do to get in the door with these types of clients. So here we go. This PDF, I put it together and I'm going to put a link below so you can check it out. Uh, but what this is, this is the, like the master list. This is like the master guide on how to get leads. So all of my clients at some point have always asked me like, what's the best way to get the leads? So I put this together because I want you to really, I want, I want you to be successful. And the way you grow a construction business is by filling up your pipeline, you got to get projects in the door so you can estimate a lot of jobs. So we call, we call it building your lead machine, getting unlimited leads. So it's called our unlimited lead system. Then you got the bid machine, which is using your estimating department or you, or, or out, you, uh, outsourcing your estimating maybe to like a company like ours. But this is the way you just bid a lot of jobs and bid the right jobs. Because when you have a lot of projects coming in the door, you can cherry pick because now you have unlimited jobs, like literally unlimited jobs. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to teach you how to fish. Now, um, I want to share with you, I want you to understand a, a basic concept in sales. What happens is our clients are going to have a problem or our prospective clients, or they all have a problem and they, and you have to be the person that brings the solution to them. So you have to start thinking like, okay, what is the best way? Like, okay, let me scroll down here. I want to share with you. So like, if I'm talking to, let's use the first one on the list, a developer. I remember that my, one of my, a good friend of mine, he's a commercial real estate agent, a commercial broker. He would always tell me like, he would call me like, Hey, can you prepare a budget for me? Hey, how do I, how, what's the cost per square foot right now? Hey, because he didn't know. And I started thinking about it. I'm like, man, there's like front end ways to get involved in projects that don't require you like bidding or, or something like that. So for example, if we're, let's look at developers, for example, for, for a second, if you are going to talk to a developer, what are some potential challenges that he might have? Uh, there is a developer that I worked with once. He was actually a GC. He was putting together a deal for an investment, uh, a, a, an investment deal, but he only had a site plan. He had, he knew where he wanted to build. He had an idea. He wanted to do a 45 unit building with a certain number of one bedroom, two bedroom and three bedrooms. And so he kind of gave me like the narrative and I put a drawing together for him to, so that we can prepare a high level budget so that he could pitch it to his investor group. So guess what he did? He pitched it to his investor group. They took it through financing and they won the job, not won the job, but they were able to build the job because he was, he, he became the GC for the investor group. And it was an amazing success because he didn't even have a set of drawings. We did a layout for him and imagine the value. Like if, imagine if you were the contractor that comes into a developer and says, Hey, I can do this for you. Or maybe you don't know how to estimate, but we do, we can actually do this for you. So if you need help on the, on the budgeting side, like you could call us and say, Hey, can you do this for me? So we could do it for you. Uh, same thing with architects. Architects don't know how to price projects. They often, they will often over design projects where they're way overpriced 
And then when it comes time to get the actual pricing from the general contractors, they're way above budget and they have to go, they have to go back and reestimate. Uh, general contractors, these are gonna be people that you're, obviously what do they need? They need bids from subs, that's it. Bids from subs, so that's their solution. Their problem is, I can't put to, put, most GCs don't know how to estimate for real. They're, they're like glorified order takers. Uh, I always make fun of them because GCs will just call for proposals and then they put it together and they don't, they're not real, they don't really know, they don't really estimate. Because, and I had GCs that they would call me and they're like, hey, the plans change, like they just change this one little detail. I'm like, man, like you can't figure out like switching the drywall from a half inch to a five eighth in one bedroom, how much that's going to cost. Like you can't figure that out. Just win the job. Don't bother me. You know, I was thinking about that. And um, so you got to think outside the box. What do they need? What does an architect need? They need someone that can give them budget pricing so that they, they can in turn give those budgets to their client. What do developers need? They need a way to calculate the finances, the budgets, the schematic lay, the, you know, they just need something that they can start putting high level numbers together uh, or, or so they can start preparing a deal together. What does a realtor need? For example, commercial residential realtors. Sometimes they're trying to put together a deal, but they have a missing element. Part of the deal is, oh, I need to know the cost of construction so that, so that I can, um, you know, maybe their client wants to come in and do a tenant build out, or maybe they want to buy a building and they need to renovate it and fix it up. They might, they might not know, they might not be able to finalize the deal because they don't have all the numbers and you can't hire an architect until, you know, like, it's like, a, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? It's the same concept. So you can actually get a budget price in and if you can be the general contractor or if you're a subcontractor, let's say you do a specific trade, you can come in you can kind of do the whole thing, the whole idea. And again, they don't need to know this, but you can come to us and we could do the whole budget for you because we were prepared for all that. And you can go in like the hero, give them their numbers, they do their deal, they love working with you, and then they're gonna start calling you and calling you and calling you and recommending you. And owners also ask realtors, hey, do you know a contractor? Hey, do you know uh, someone that, that can build this for me? So you wanna invest in these people because they're gonna refer you business. By doing this, you're basically securing hot, hot, hot referrals. Because if you're an owner and you get a, uh, let's say you're a commercial business owner and you have to do a tenant build out, you have to build out your office. You go to the realtor and say, hey, by the way, I know that you're in the space. Do you know any general contractors? Well, actually I do. I am builders or whatever your company's name is. I highly recommend them. They're super good. They're always helping me out, super reputable. I highly recommend them, boom the chances of them going with somebody else, pff, forget it, they're gonna go with you. Interior designers, oftentimes interior designers hire subcontractors, they hire the GCs on behalf of their client. They need budget pricing, they need progress estimates. Property managers, they need someone that's quick and reliable that can come in and take care of repairs. They need someone that can come and repaint things. They need someone that can come, maybe like a multi-purpose company that can come in and do a lot of different things because today they need to do a renovation and then tomorrow they have another property that they need to do an asphalt, uh, new asphalt and then another, another pr property they need to repaint because a tenant just moved. So if you can if you can do a bunch of things like that and you're prepared with your team or you can like send someone in a moment's notice, property managers would be good. Solve that problem. Mortgage brokers, sometimes they need costs for construction or things like that to prepare a deal. There's there's, there's, um, it, don't think just houses, but just, th but think also uh, in the commercial space. Brokers sometimes will need to prepare deals which involve, you know, cost of construction to do tenant build outs and things like that. Very similar to a realtor. Come in and these guys can be a good resource. Con active construction sites. Everywhere, everywhere you go, take pictures of the, the banners. And those are people that you add to your master list. I talk about the master list all the time. Put people, just stick people in there and you can call, 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 call. And you'll never run out of people again. So I'm not going to go through every single one, but like think, what does an owner's rep need? Oh, an owner's rep, they, they usually represent the owner uh, on, a, on, a, on a like consulting, as a consultant. So what do they need? They need a reputable GC. They need someone that does a good job. They need someone that is prepared to do, uh, you know, that, that is prepared to, come in and put budget pricing is compare is 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 able to come in and just be like an asset to the project i mean let's let's let me skip to to a couple of hoas what do homeowners associations need they need to constantly maintain 
the buildings. They need to maintain the spaces. So come in if you're very similar to a property manager. Empty tenant spaces. Look, you know, I bet you never thought about this. Go to your local mall and they always have empty tenant spaces. So that means that within the next like three to six, maybe three, four, five months, they're probably gonna have some new tenants in there. And what do they always need to do in a, in a mall? They need to do a build out. So go ahead, go and get information. Go find out how you could become a preferred contractor. Usually a, ten, an, an, a, a strip mall or a mall is gonna have a property manager that manages it. Go find out, go back up to number, whatever was number, the property manager one, and go find out who the property manager is so you can go give your information. Like, like think outside the box, 3D rendering companies. Like you, I bet you never thought about this. Did you know that 3D rendering companies find out what projects are gonna get built way before they even show up on Dodge, on the Blue Book, or, or any of these? I found out about this because somebody I know, his wife works for a 3D rendering company. She's a manager there. And and um, they were they were finding out, they were doing renderings obviously for marketing because they want to sell these high-end things for these huge high-rises and things like that. So these people are going to know way in the beginning, build relationships with these people, give them, I don't know if you can give them kickback, kickbacks legally, but at least give them some sort of finder's fee, give them some sort of like, a, um, I don't know, take them out to dinner as a, as a thank you. I don't know, but build relationships here. Print shops, the architects are always printing at these print shops, build relationships there. Previous clients, go call your clients. Get referral, uh, go ask for referrals. Go down the list of everybody who you ever, you've ever talked to. Go get referrals. The title page method, this is oh, this is one of the most powerful ones. Go sign up on Building Connected or go on one of these lead platforms or just find out about a project. And if you're a GC, you can go and find out all the project directory. Who's the owner? Who's the owner's rep? Who's the architect? And you can call them and get access. They might be able to receive your bid on that project. I mean, the sky's the limit here. So... Um, another one is what I call the double dipping method. It's, uh, I have it over here towards the top. The double dipping method. If you're a GC, you can also perform subcontractor work. Just negotiate a deal with your subs that they give you like wholesale prices so that you can come in on projects as a GC and you can also be pursuing your own subcontractor jobs. And then as a GC, you could bid like the whole interior package or you could do like framing drywall and paint or frame drywall flooring and acoustical ceilings or whatever combination and then you're going to have instead of instead of just bidding as a gc you could bid for five six trades of that project or a multiple project so don't don't sell yourself short you can do this so these are the strategies that i'm teaching that I, that I, I really want you to understand now, if you think this is valuable, make sure you subscribe because I'm releasing videos just like this every single day and I want to make sure that you get alerted so that you can get uh, the very best of what we have. And if you really want to grow your business, this PDF is just one out of a ton of resources that we're putting that we've been putting together helping contractors grow their business and I have a video training that I want to share with you. There's going to be a link in the description below that is going to show you basically a framework on how to grow your construction business and explode your sales in the next what 90 days six months i mean i'm telling you like if you implement these strategies that we teach you're going to see a dramatic transformation in your business doesn't matter if you're just starting out watch that video and you're going to see a big change in your business